This is episode 37 of the Fitness Plus Technology Podcast with the Vice Chair of URSA and the owner of Newtown Athletic Club, Jim Worthington. The FIT Act is really a way for working Americans to be incentivized financially to be healthy. You would get a tax break of $1,000 for an individual or $2,000 for a family to enroll in programming, i.e. a health club membership or smoking cessation or kids uh, sports program leagues to help incentivize you to get healthy. Right now, one in five adults meet the 2008 physical activity guidelines and they believe that if there wasn't a financial incentive, you'd have two out of five. Welcome to the Fitness Plus Technology Podcast for club owners, operators, and fitness professionals. I am your host, Josh Trent, and this is your number one trusted resource for the accelerating world of fitness technology. Each week, we bring you an expert interview with a global influencer at the crossroads of fitness and technology. You'll gain the insights, tools, and inspiration you need to stay connected to the pulse of what matters most for your fitness business in the age of exponential technologies. For episode 37, we're learning about the exponential benefits and the current progress of the FIT Act and why it's so vital to our fitness industry growth with the vice chair of URSA and the owner of Newtown Athletic Club, Jim Worthington. After a recent report published by Fit America this year, the inactivity pandemic, it should not come as a surprise that Nike, the Cooper Institute, the American Heart Institute, Shape America, and Pop Warner Football are all joining forces to pass the FIT Act through both the Senate and Congress. As you'll hear on today's show with Jim, this legislation has the potential to massively uplevel our industry reach and help put prevention in our healthcare system. Earlier this year, you heard from Brian O'Rourke in episode 20 that with as much as we're doing collectively in our fitness industry to help fight this obesity epidemic, the reality is our current healthcare model is broken. What we have isn't health care, it's sick care. And the passage of the FIT Act will bring legislative power to help change that by getting more people active and healthy than ever before. With this turning of the tide, the FIT Act will also help Americans save 20 to 30 percent on yearly expenses related to physical activity. As an industry professional, we need your help today to make this bill pass. Be sure to tap on your show artwork and click the link in purple that says Ask Congress to Pass the FIT Act. What simple yet effective actions can thousands of leaders in our fitness space take today to create more revenue and serve bigger numbers of brand new members? The answers to that question and much more takeaways for club owners, operators, and fitness professionals right here, right now with Jim Worthington. Jim Worthington is the owner of Newtown Athletic Club, a 250,000 square foot lifestyle club on 22 acres, established in 1978. He's also a real estate developer and supporter of startup entrepreneurs. After earning his bachelor's degree in 1978 from Westchester University and working as a racquetball pro and club manager, Jim took on an ownership role at the NAC in 1981 building the club to its current status as a top 100 club in America for the past 20 years. Jim Worthington, I'd like to welcome you to the Fitness Plus Technology Podcast. Glad to be on, Josh. Appreciate having uh, spending time with you. Yeah, this is going to be a great conversation. And the timing of this is perfect because the FIT Act is still in Congress. Today, we're exploring the FIT Act with you, Jim, and your decades of expertise. For people that don't know you, maybe they've been under a fitness rock. Can you tell us who you are, what you do, and a little bit about why you do it? Well, I've been in the industry since 1978. 1981, I went to a club called the Newtown Racquetball Club, became a the manager for a couple of years. And then in 1983, the people that owned it made me a partner. And then uh, over the years, I acquired some of the other partners interest. And as of three or four years ago, um, I became the sole owner. In 1983, I had the pleasure to go to my first URSA convention, which was the game changer for not only me, but the entire industry. URSA was founded in 81. So I got on board early. And that was a defining moment in my career in in terms of uh, everything that we've done and and learned and have grown to be from a 15,000 square foot, three acre club back in 1978 to a 250,000 square foot, uh, 24 acre club. Today, I could attribute to URSA and the relationships I've made through that organization. So if uh, URSA had a color, I'd be bleeding it. I could tell you, (laughs) I owe everything to URSA and what they've done for me from the founding fathers like Rick Caro and Norm Cates and Kurt Buseman to um, John McCarthy and all the people on the staff at URSA over the years. And then, of course, the current group of Joe Moore and 
Anita and Helen Durkin and all the people that have made URSA what it is today is the leading fitness trade association in the world by far. Now, Jim, you sit on the board of directors as the vice chair. Can you tell us a little bit about what the URSA board of directors does and your role as the vice chair? Well, really, the board of directors is there just to create some structure and vision for the industry. The actual work, uh, 99% of it is done by the URSA staff, which is uh, really key to know. We're there just to help guide and set the direction, but they do all the work. Now, that being said, the board is important because it's since it's a global organization, uh, we address global issues. And one of the big issues is that we want to get you know, as many people in the world working out and fight the global obesity ap- epidemic. Yeah. But um, the URSA board is the highest honor I've ever received in the fitness industry. I mean, after being involved here, um, well, next year will be 40 years I'll have been in the industry to just be part of the URSA board. And then this year, I've got the distinct honor to be the co-chair. Derek Gallup is the chair. It's just, uh, it's just a dream come true. It's a opportunity to give back in a small way to an industry that has given so much to me. And to be in that room with some of the top people in the industry, uh, global industry, uh, you know, we have people like Carrie Keppel from New Zealand and uh, Alan Leach from Ireland and Gustavo Borges from Brazil. And then you've got all the U.S. contingent and Anastasia Jasana from Russia, who now is in Florida. I mean, we are Mm -hmm. representing the entire world in the fight to make fitness a part of everybody's life around the world. So it's an unbelievable uh, opportunity for me. And Jim, you know, the importance of the Fit Act, what URSA, the entire team, the global team really at URSA is doing to drive this Fit Act forward. This is something so important. We actually are going to link in our show notes today, three specific links, one of them from the URSA blog. There's a new report that came out. It was Inactivity Pandemic, and this was put out by Fit America. For people that haven't heard our episode with Brian O'Rourke, can you talk about the FIT Act? What does this mean for our space, Jim? The FIT Act is really a way for working Americans to be incentivized financially to be healthy. What happens, you you would get a tax break of $1,000 for an individual or $2,000 for a family to enroll in programming, i.e. a health club membership or smoking cessation or kids uh, sports program leagues, things like that to help incentivize you to get healthy. And what they're finding, or some of the studies have shown, is that right now one in five adults meet the 2008 uh, physical activity guidelines, and they believe that if there wasn't a financial incentive, you'd have two out of five. Mm. Now, you know, why is that important? Uh, one, uh, health care costs, and this has been a big issue right now in the last, uh, since January, since Donald Trump came in the president. I mean, they're having problems right now getting past the the Affordable Care Act, and there's a lot of costs involved. Mm-hmm. And everybody knows that medical costs and health care costs are you know, going through the mo- to the moon. We believe that this is a great way to save the government money on being able to spend money up front on incentivizing people and getting a payback on the back end. For $1 spent on these type of programs, whether it be a health club membership or other type activities, there's a $3 savings on the, on the healthcare expenditures. So the, to us, it just is a great return on the investment. And it seems like we believe as the health club industry, we could be part of the solution to reduce the cost of health care. And what I think is most important, this is something that's incentivizing. Finally, we're having something that is incentivizing national physical activity and fitness to improve people's health. This fit would allow taxpayers to place up to $2,000 a year in existing pre-tax medical accounts for reimbursement. But what is URSA's role? What is URSA doing in representation with Congress? We're also going to link congress.gov. The actual bill passage link looks like it was last updated in March. I'm curious right now, though, with your role and what URSA is doing, what are we seeing as far as co-joined efforts to pass this bill through? Well, first of all, there's a number of people that URSA is really uh, at the tip of the spear leading this charge, but there's a number of coalition members, including Nike and the Cooper Institute, the American Heart Institute, Shape America, even Pop Warner Football. They're all involved in um, trying to get this passed through the Senate and Congress. Right now, in in this 115th uh, session, 
Uh, we've got Senators Thune and Murphy, one's a Republican, one's a Democrat, so it's good we have bipartisan support. And then in the House, we've got Congressman Kind, who's a Democrat, and Jason Smith, a Republican from Missouri, who have both inter- introduced the bill. And in the last four months, uh, FIT has gotten 62 bipartisan lawmakers to agree to spots, co-sponsor this bill, 51 from the House and 11 from the Senate. Mm. So so what URSA is doing, obviously, through uh, their efforts, but more importantly, through their members uh, efforts, are trying to get more people to co-sign on. And really, that's the hard part. URSA can only do so much. Them being out of Boston and being a global organization, uh, that's fine. But when it comes to relationships with your local senators or your state senators or your local congressmen, it's really the obligation of the people in the industry, the club owners, the operators, to reach out and make this a priority to get them on board. And frankly, that's where my frustration lies. I feel like this could be the biggest, I, no, I believe this could be the biggest opportunity for our fitness industry to grow the amount of participants and change people's lives. Uh, look, that's why we all got into this industry was that we, we believe that we could do things better and for the common good of all people. That's why, yes. you know, you go to work every day. And uh, I am just surprised that we have not mobilized as an industry in the United States to get more of the owner operators involved, knowing that it's their relationships that are going to push this over the goal line. And I think what's going to happen now in the short term, we are going to make a real push to reach out to our people, starting with the Industry Leadership Council, the ILC, which is a hundred clubs uh, that have joined. It's like a s- subgroup of URSA where we ask for people to join uh, to give money to help you know further the cause, but also to use them as a grassroots group to try to get their local senators and their, their uh, state senators and local congressmen on board on this act. So. That's going to be a big push here, I believe, in the next month with URSA and, and in my role on the board. I will be, uh, oddly enough, be uh, in two hours from now meeting with Congressman Fitzpatrick, who uh, is a freshman uh, congressman uh, this year out of the Congressional 8th, where I am. And uh, Linda Mitchell and myself will be meeting with him today and discussing uh, getting a meeting with some of the people in, in the Congress that make the decisions and also some senators to meet with them in a couple weeks and uh, really, really pound this point home and see if we could do some grassroots uh, campaigning to get more people on the coast side. It really just comes down to people reaching out to the people they know. Yes. Everybody either knows their congressman or knows somebody who knows the congressman. And I think a lot of times people don't realize these people work for us. So if you want a meeting with your congressman, you, 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 you call their office and you say, I want to come in and Talk to you about the fit and whip back. This is why I'm so excited to have you on the show, Jim, because you are at that bleeding edge of change that we need in our industry. There's actually a get fit. It's a toolkit that URSA has created for club operators, for people to become more aware of this campaign. We're going to link that in our show notes as well. But Jim, if there was one or two steps that a fitness professional, a club operator or owner could do today to help drive this initiative forward, what would that be? One, they'd get well-versed enough to be able to go to their congressman or senator and and give the ask and, and explain to them why that they need to get on board with these things, why it makes sense to fit is fiscally responsible. It makes sense. It's going to save our country money. In the meantime, it's going to get, you know, millions of more people healthy and happier. Once you get up to speed on what that bill is all about, then you make the phone call. You make the appointment to see him in Washington. You make this appointment to see him in your or your congressional district. And if and if in fact you don't feel comfortable with that, then there's many people that don't reach out to URSA, reach out to me, and we will either assist you with it and go, go with you, yeah. or guide you through what you need to do and say to to get the point of point. But what, it, it really is. I think I think people really make it much more complicated it is. When you go and meet with your congressman or you meet a senator, I think people, because they haven't had that experience as much as you would think, they're somewhat 
concerned about or scared, thinking they can't make a difference. Well, the health club operators forget. And for an example, in my club, I have 12,000 members. So potentially that's 12,000 votes right there, not counting all the people that, you know, branch off of the 12,000 people that they know. So there's 12,000 members. Maybe they have family that equals 30,000 and maybe 25,000 of those could vote. Could you imagine the power that we have? And we haven't really unleash that power in the industry. And I think what we've decided at URSA and the staff headed by Helen Durkin and, and of course, Joe Moore is the president and the people on the uh, public policy committee, which I'm a part of, of URSA, and we're going to unleash that power by going to the people directly, the club owners are operators and saying, look, th- this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I can tell you this, if we don't get this past this year with this administration, because they are primed for it. I do know I've met with Vice President Pence. I have actually talked to him about this. He is on board. He he loves it. He he thinks it makes all the sense in the world. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of political clout right now in Washington to get things done. And um, I just urge everybody to get out and, and, and make that call and make that contact to, to push this thing over the goal line. If we don't do it this year, I don't know if we'll ever do it. And we've been talking about this for 10 years. And this is why we're having a specific show with your expertise to talk about this. And I think it's easy to forget, Jim, you know, a lot of club operators and trainers, they're going about their day-to-day business serving their clients. And I think to take that deep breath, to see our industry from 30,000 feet in the sky, this is not just the fitness industry. Fit is also going to reduce the cost of league and event entry fees. So kids in Little League, people that are special populations, elder care. I mean, the list goes on and on. So this is much bigger than just the fitness industry, correct? Oh, no question about it. And, and, and you know, it's, I think you hit it on the head. People get involved in their day to day and miss the big picture. You know, we've, we've talked about trying to move the needle uh, of health club participants in the United States for years. And we've had some growth here recently. I I think we've gone from like 15% to 18%. But this would open up a whole group of people that have not been able to engage with us. And, um, you know, and and let's forget about the monetary benefit. Let's just talk about, you know, something else. I mean, the reality is that there's so many people that have chronic diseases that they had found that if we could get people active, 80% 80% of all heart disease, strokes, and type 2 diabetes, and 40% of cancers could be prevented and even eliminated if four lifestyle behaviors were, were under control, uh, physical inactivity, unhealthy diet, mm-hmm. tobacco, too much alcohol. I mean, we have the power to make people you know, live meaningful, happy, healthy lives. So, hey, there's a great financial incentive for all of us of health club owners and operators and people that are in the industry. But let's think about what our, why we're all engaged in this this industry and why we love it is we want to make people's lives better. Yes. And look at the, look at the information there. Can you imagine if we could get people moving, more people moving, how many more people's lives that we could affect? I mean, we're, we're difference makers. That's why we got into this industry. What's really interesting too, Jim, is you have such a high vantage point here. I'm curious when you look back across the 30 years plus, what has not changed? You know, so much has changed with technology. And on this show, we contrast that intersection of fitness and tech. When we look at the Fed Act and the importance of this, what is that really pointing towards? What is the one thing about our fitness space that hasn't changed over the past 30 years plus? Well, I will tell you as much as I and I'm a big believer in technology and Ursa is very much they've got a technology council now and all the things they do. And I think it's absolutely needed and necessary. But the one thing that hasn't changed in this industry, and I don't care if you're a trainer or a club owner, personal relationships when you're trying to get things done, uh, you, you, you can't just send an email to your congressman and say, hey, get on board on this. It's just not going to happen. Those relationships, meeting people, uh, pressing the flesh, talking to people in person are really, really key, whether you're trying to get new clients down on the fitness room floor we're trying to get fit, the FIT Act passed. And, uh, you know, it all works together. And thank God we do have ways to get, you know, our message out to thousands of people at one time through, you know, Facebook, Twitter and stuff like that. But when it comes down to getting a bill passed in Congress, that's where you need to see someone face to face and tell them the importance of this and also let them know that you've got 
you know, a thousand constituents in your club, or yes. in my case, 12,000, they could pull the lever to get this done. Tr- trust me, I, I got involved in the political process in a big way in the last year and a half. And, and, and the reason I got involved is because I think the system's b- broken on both sides. And what I found that grassroots uh, work, you know, getting people involved, making sure that you're out in the field, showing politicians that you represent a constituency of people that could be the difference between them getting elected or not, that carries a lot of weight. Votes ca- carry weight. And I think that if we as an industry got out there, look, there's 400 and some different congressmen and 100 senators. Yeah. I mean, we should be able to, ca- we could cover them. Hell, I know a guy, Chuck Runyon, he's got a health club in every state of the United States. I mean, how powerful can you be more powerful than that? In fact, I'm going to have a conversation with him later this afternoon. But he can't do it alone. We all, whether you have the smallest club or the largest club, if we collectively work together, we could get because we represent, you know, 20 million people that exercise. Wow, Jim, this has been such a timely and important conversation. There's one last piece of our show and it's a surprise, but don't worry. There'll be really fun questions. It's a fit six round. Are you ready? Sure. Let's do it. What's one thing that you do to stay healthy and fit with all that you have in your calendar? How do you prioritize your physical and emotional health in your busy career? 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Every day is my time. I have two hours every morning, no phone calls, no staff interruption, I'll talk to the members in short first because I don't want to be rude, hmm. but that's my two hours. And that's been that way uh, since I got in the industry since 1978. I always, you know, if we're going to talk the talk. We need to walk the walk. And I, you know, uh, I believe in fitness. I love it. I look forward to my workout and I don't need, that's why we're having this interview at uh, 11 o'clock Eastern as opposed uh-huh. to 10 o'clock Eastern. <laughs> Jim, what's one of the most profound books that you might have read over the course of your career that helped shape you? Well, I haven't read a lot of books, but the one book that did was a The Age Wave by Ken Dykewall back in the 80s. And it was a 80s, early 90s. It was a book that uh, he was a keynote speaker at an URSA convention. And I followed uh, him. It was basically following the baby boomers and what they would want it throughout their lifetime. And if you followed them, you could make a uh, profound impact in your business or what you did for a living. And mm-hmm. I've kind of followed the, the, what those people wanted to grow my club from the 15,000 square foot club on three acres to what it is today. And I, that was by far the most important book I ever read. Now, I don't read a lot of books, but I'll tell you, I can't wait for the Ursa magazine to come the first of the month. That's the Bible, the industry. I read that cover the cover within 20 minutes of it coming in. I look forward to that. And some other uh, publications as well in the fitness. I'm more of a magazine, a professional magazine reader than I am a book reader, but Uh, That one book back in the day was a game changer for me. You're a mentor to many. Who has been one of your mentors or influencers in your career? Well, it's really started uh, early on uh, in in the industry. It was the the people that I named that started her. So Rick Caro and the Norm Cates and the Kirk Busemans and people that early on in 1983. And then over the years, I was was really fortunate. And one thing I think is the huge value of Ursa being a member of it is I got to meet guys like Roger Ralph, Ben Emden out in Michigan, who's no longer in the business. And then more recently over the years, Pat Laus at the Atlantic Club and more recently, Gail Landers, fitness formula out, out in Chicago. And I mean, there's so many like people that I can name that mm-hmm. I picked their brain and we've shared ideas. I mean, we've in the last 15 years, I feel like we've started giving back to all those people that gave to us, but those people, and and I'd be remiss not to mention John McCarthy, John McCarthy, who used to be the president of URSA and was the first president was just a, just such a great ambassador for the fitness industry. And I love them to death. And he always, he's always looking out for me and hooking me up with other people uh, great guy, but, uh, him, Rick Carroll, great. I mean, there, there's so many good people. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm probably going to insult somebody by not mentioning them, but <laughs> Jim, do you use any fitness tech or any pieces of technology at all to help keep you either healthier fit or productive? 
I am not a huge tech guy, but I will tell you, I will not miss a workout without my MyZone belt. And uh, uh, we are huge advocates of MyZone. Uh, I'll take it on vacation with me. Uh, I, I, I wear it every time I go for a walk, you know, on Saturday afternoon around my block, uh, I'll wear it, uh, my zone. And I'll tell you why, uh, I probably don't use it as the way everybody else uses it, but I look at those calories burnt at the end of my workout. And if I don't get to a certain amount, I stay longer mm. and I can also, it gives me, uh, the other thing it does for me, it lets me know when I'm, I'm getting my peak workout versus, you know, Hey, I'm kind of dragging and not getting full max effort into my workout. But my zone, I, I, I wouldn't do a workout without it. We know there's a big difference between inspiration and motivation. Jim, the curiosity for a lot of people listening is your inspiration about what Ursa is doing. What inspires you most about what Ursa is doing for global health? Well, first of all, they're, they're the biggest player and they do span the, uh, the, the whole world. And I think the fact that they've got, we've got great international presence on our board is key. And then, of course, they do, you know, the, the European Congress in, in uh, October and, and, they, and they're down in Brazil and Mexico and, of course, the Ursa Institute. But the inspiration that they give me is that they are the leading authority on education. And, of course, their trade show is second to none. And uh, I just am so inspired because they've done so much for me. And I realize that they are doing the same things for others that they've done for me. And if people are smart enough to take advantage of all what they have to offer yeah. and the networking opportunities, they can't help but not be successful. They, I just, again, I, I can't say enough about Ursa, not just because I'm not, because I, I remember I, I'm 60 years old. I, I just got on the board two years ago. I, if we had this conversation five years ago, I would re be raving probably almost as, much as I am now, other than now that I'm on the inside, that group of people up in Boston, headed by Joe Moore, they are changing the world. And I couldn't be more prouder to be part of an organization that's so well run and so professional. And the staff is so awesome that, you know, I, they inspire me every day because they're, they're working to make us better. I only hope that I can give a little bit back and, you know, return the favor. Jim, this podcast is going to go out to thousands of club owners and fitness leaders in our space. What do you see as a new possibility that didn't exist years ago for us now at this crossroads of technology and fitness? Well, in the U.S., uh, certainly this fit bill, I mean, if there's a way to push that across the finish line and get our members involved in getting this done, to get it into their heads, this is a key defining moment. Uh, I think that would be huge. Globally, I think just continuing to reach out and expand our reach through URSA and other organizations and federations are doing that. Get people on board, get the government on board, seeing that exercise is really a great return on investment for their healthcare problems and crisis. By the way, the crisis is global. Yes. So, I mean, this just makes sense. The more we get people up to speed on why exercise is really medicine and why it's not an option. It's a necessity that we get as many people involved as possible. And, and the last thing I want to say is somehow, somehow we have to bring it down to the levels of the less fortunate and the people that can't afford a health club membership where, you know, they have access to the same thing we do because not everybody has the ability. Now, I know there's $10 clubs out there. And so, but $10 to a inner city family in Philadelphia, you know, there might be the difference between e eating dinner that night or, or something really even more important. So I think we can't look at this as just a thing for the middle, upper middle, more educated people. We have to find a way to bring it down to the people, all people. And, and frankly, I, that's not just a, uh, a fitness issue. That's a, to me, is a political issue for, for our country and our world to get further ahead is we've got to find a way to help the less fortunate. And I think exercise can do that if it's provided for all people.
I have a lot to thank for the fitness industry. 10 plus years ago, I started in Las Vegas at a 24 hour club. And since then, my life has transformed in so many ways. So Jim, thanks so much for coming on the show and talking to us about this personal health investment today act really, really important and timely for all the fitness leaders in our space. So we appreciate what you do and we will see you very soon. Thank you very much, Josh. I hope this helps uh, with getting this bill passed. Thank you very much. Jim reminds us that our congressmen work for us. As a fitness industry professional, it may feel somewhat overwhelming to believe your vote can create impact for this bill, but the truth is that the URSA organization is here to support getting your voice heard. Be sure to tap on your show artwork today right from your phone and click the link in purple that says Ask Congress to Pass Fit Act. URSA can only do so much, and when it comes to relationships with your local senators, your state senators, and local congressmen, it's really the obligation of the people in the fitness industry, our club owners and operators, to reach out and make this a priority for their representatives. Jim believes this is the biggest opportunity we've seen for the fitness industry to grow its participants and change more people's lives. The Fit Act is far bigger than just our space. It's a way to bring fitness down to the levels of the less fortunate, to those who can't afford a health club membership where they can now have access to the same things that everyone else does. The reality is not everyone has the ability to attend a fitness facility. And with the Fit Act, this will make a huge difference for the health of so many who need it most. Thank you for listening to the Fitness Plus Technology Podcast. Here's a quick message from Brian O'Rourke. Hello, everyone. This is Brian O'Rourke. Thanks for listening to the Fitness Plus Technology Podcast with Josh and all of our fantastic guests. Look, we have done almost 40 of these podcasts to date, and there will be many more to come. And what surprises me is I hear from leaders in the fitness industry across the world all the time about how much they enjoy this content. Don't you want your brand, your service, your product in the fitness industry to be featured on this podcast? I would. And so please, check with us in the show notes, get some information, become a sponsor. Let's help this podcast grow to serve the industry around the world. Thanks very much for listening.